again, a delightfully intimidating expression over here until you realize that basically what we ask you to do here is expand this function logarithm of x into a Fourier Bessel series using these Bessel functions of order zero as, uh, as basis functions. So knowing that, then this thing becomes slightly less intimidating, hopefully. So let's uh, pause the video and see if you can prove that this is uh, true. Okay, so the function we need to expand, f of x, is minus one half the logarithm of x. And for that, we need to calculate overlap integrals. See the textbook. The overlap integral is an integral from zero to one times a weighting function, which in case of the Bessel functions is just x, then times the basis function. So that's j naught psi i of x, with psi i being a zero of that, uh, that Bessel function. And then we multiply by the function that we need to expand. Now, in our case, we're not going to bother about this prefactor minus one half here. You will see that that prefactor is basically there for cosmetic reasons later on. But we're just going to have logarithm of x dx here. And then, of course, we shouldn't forget to bring back this factor minus one half at, at the very end. But we're not, uh, not there yet. So again, we have the situation where we have the product of a Bessel function and a power of x and then some other junk here. So let's try and use the same approach as we already did in the previous exercise, namely making use of these particular formulas here, which involve the derivative d dt of a power of t, so t to the power of n Bessel function of order n of x. And we know that this is equal to t to the power of n, the Bessel function of an order which is one lower. Okay. Now, one thing we could do is we could do a substitution where we replace um, xi i x with a different variable. Just for variation, we're not going to do that in this case, but just keep it as it is. And um, so let's see how we can apply this formula to, to that case over here. So this equation will take the integral on both sides. So this means that we will be taking integrals of order n minus 1. The integral that we're interested in is an integral of order 0. So we know that n minus 1 should be equal to 0 in order to be useful for this particular case. And here in this particular formula, we're going to do the substitution that t is psi i of x and uh, therefore that means that dt is psi i dx. Okay, let's do just that. So d dt that becomes 1 over psi i d dx, all right. Then we have t to the power 1 in our case, so that becomes psi i of x, Bessel function of order one, argument psi i of x. Okay, good, that's the left-hand side. And then for the right-hand side, psi i of x, Bessel function of order zero, psi i of x. Okay, closing our brackets here. So this might seem like a useful thing to be able to try and solve that integral. Obviously, there's some extra junk here, extra factors in the integrant that we need to take care of. Um, but this is a good intermediate stage to pause the video and uh, try and use the intermediate step that we, uh, that we have here. So if we rewrite our integral here, so an integral from 0 and 1, but let's now slightly factor it in a, in a different way. Stay here. So we have the, uh, the integral of ln of x, which is going to be our, our first factor. And then we have another factor, x j naught psi i of x dx. So we have two parts. One of them is going to be our u, and the other one is going to be dv. Which one is which? Well, obviously, since we went through this whole trouble here in order to calculate 
um, this thing over here, we know that it's good to be able to use dv for this thing here, for the second factor, because we know what v is. We've just shown upstairs there that dv is equal to d. Um, yeah, let's perhaps simplify this and get rid of xi i on both, time, both uh, sides. So we know that uh, this thing is equal to the derivative of 1 over xi i. And then we have x j1 xi i of x. So thanks to our work there, um, we know what v is. And then again, it's just a matter of setting the machinery of integration by parts into motion. So first of all, we have the integral. So we have the u v evaluated between zero and one. So u is the logarithm of x. V is 1 over xi i x j1 xi i of x evaluated between 0 and uh, 1. And then finally, we have minus the integral from 0 to 1 v du. So our v is again 1 over xi i x j1 xi i x. And then our du, so the derivative of the logarithm, that becomes 1 over x. And that's good news because that means we've gotten rid of our scary logarithm and we can also divide by x here uh, in both, both factors. So that seems like, uh, like progress. Let's work this out a little bit more. Um, so if we look at the bounds here, for the upper bounds we have the logarithm of 1 which will be zero. For the lower bound, um, we have the logarithm of zero, which is problematic, but we multiply, of course, by x. So in essence, we have a limit of the type zero times logarithm of zero, which will also vanish. So we do not need to concern ourselves with this first uh, term here. So that's, uh, that's pretty good news. And that means that our integral just reduces to minus one over xi i, the integral from 0 to 1, j1 xi i of x dx. So that sounds very promising. We've simplified our integral considerably. So pause the video here and see if you can do similar steps to uh, solve this integral completely. You might be tempted to do exactly the same thing as we did before. So let's see what that would bring us. So if we do something very similar to what we had up there, then we would need to have a value for n where n minus 1 should be equal to 1 in our case because we take integrals of Bessel functions of order 1. So this means that n should be equal to 2. And that means that in our formulas, we will have nasty factors like t squared, um, which we don't have here. So this will make our life very complicated. And it turns out that with this particular formula, we will not be able to simplify this integral any further. So this approach up here is a no-go. What do we do now? Well, luckily, this equation up there had a little brother or little sister involving negative powers of t. So hopefully this one will be more useful. So let's see what happens. We have the integral, sorry, we have d dt of t to the minus n j n t. So we've shown that this is equal to minus t to the minus n j n plus 1 of t. So again, this is a result that we've shown earlier. Which value of n should we use here? So now when we take the integral of left-hand side and right-hand side, we see that we have an integral involving Bessel functions of order n plus 1. So our n uh, plus 1 in this particular case should be equal to 1. So n plus 1 should be equal to 1. Therefore, n should be equal to 0. And again, if we say that t is equal to xi i of x, then we can just write down the following, namely 
that so ddt becomes one over xi i and then we have d dx so luckily t to the power of zero that's one and then we have j one of xi i x so that's the left hand side and for the right hand side we just have j one xi i of x so that sounds very good because if you take the integral here of both uh, sides of the equation then that's exactly the integral that you're interested in namely the integral of the Bessel function of order one so you can immediately write down the, the result here let's do just that so the integral we needed to solve was one over xi i the integral from zero to one Bessel function order one xi i x dx and thanks to our hard work we've uh, shown that this is uh, equal to minus one over xi i and then we have another uh, minus xi i there so minus one xi i g not xi i x being evaluated between the bounds zero and one that becomes one over xi i squared then for our upper bound we have j naught xi i minus j naught naught now do not forget these xi i's they're not just any random parameters they're actually zeros of that particular Bessel function so out goes that term and also do not forget that we know that j naught of zero is actually one so at the end we have minus one over xi j squared so we have actually calculated the integral that we were interested in and now we have all the ingredients to bring together in order to construct our fourier bessel series because we know from the textbook that the formula for the expansion coefficients first consists of a factor which is just a normalization coefficient so that's 2 j 1 squared psi i then we should not forget this factor minus one half that we omitted from the very beginning here so if we scroll back to our exercise uh, definition there's a, a factor minus one half here so let's bring that one back now that's this minus one half and then we have our overlap integral which we calculated to be minus one over xi i squared and here you see that this minus one half cancels with uh, the minus over here and the, the two over there so finally we can write down that our minus one half logarithm of x can be written as the following series expansion as a series expansion involving basis functions j naught xi i of x and then our expansion coefficient that's just going to be j1 squared xi i divided by xi i squared and there you have it that's the result of this calculation where we've shown how to expand the logarithm in a Fourier Bessel series